today is specifically on Web 2.0. Uh, uh, we have, uh, I think you, you've heard me talking about Web 2.0 many times until now. I, I think we even tried to define it somewhere in one of the, our previous classes when we said, well, Web 2.0 is exactly the same thing as it was Web 1.0 in terms of the, the availability of technology, but it is uh, a technology being used in a different way. Web 1.0 would have been using the new technology that was available, let's say, in the 90s, uh, which was the Internet, to do what things were used to do. So, Web 1.0 was too concerned with, um, with efficiency. Uh, efficiency means doing whatever we already know that is, uh, well, whatever used to be important, uh, faster and with more quality. Uh, Web 2.0 benefit from the same technology that was uh, already available uh, for everyone, uh, and started using it uh, to, to achieve effectiveness. Uh, and basically the question, uh, the, let's say those developers of Web, Web 2.0 were, were posing themselves was, okay, we have a lot of technology that allows for interconnection, uh, that allows for a, a lot of people uh, having access to material through electronic means, uh, is this simply another way of doing broadcasting and as in the past? Is this simply uh, a, a new technology that will either replace or compete with television, for example? Uh, will we advertise our products the same way we did when we had um, the customers sitting in their sofas watching soap operas? Or is this technology uh, bringing us the possibility of building a different new world. Uh, some companies, some, some people that started asking the right question, which was, what can I do differently to what we did before this technology, and not simply, what can, can I do more efficiently? Uh, those companies that, that were able to ask that question started coming up with um, with what became the culture of Web 2.0, what became the, the, let's say, the way we use the, the internet. And, and uh, it was simply using the technology as a platform and allowing the users to decide how they would like to use that platform, how they would like to use uh, those, uh, um, you know, technological features that were available to them. And in that sense, uh, Web 2.0 was a collective intelligence, um, let's say, tool from the beginning, because it started already with the idea that the user should be in control, the user should be empowered, so he or she, or in fact the collective of his and she's, uh, could uh, define what they wanted to do with that technology. Uh, of course, we already had, even uh, when uh, Web 1.0 was still ruling, let's say, those companies from the first, uh, and, 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 and here we're talking about the uses of, of the Internet for, for business purposes, right? Uh, so, when during the second half of the 1990s, Web 1.0 was ruling, there were already people that were thinking that the world needed to change. Uh, you remember Hedges Machina uh, with uh, his real-time real strategies, one of the first papers that you read here, written or at least published in 1995, which means that it was written even earlier than that. He was already telling us what Web 2.0 would have to be about. Right? Of course, very little people were listening because most people were concerned in doing whatever, whatever they had been doing for years or decades faster or more efficiently. And he was saying, wrong, what you have to do is a different thing. From now on, you have to use technology to build a dialogue 
with each one of your customers. And it was a, 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 a dialogue building that was much stronger than any dialogue building that companies could have done in the past, simply because uh, it was a, a dialogue between the individuals, the, the customers, and the company by means of its, its own systems. Right? It was not employers of the companies on the phone talking to each, each uh, customer on their own, because if they did that, they would need to have as many uh, employer, uh, employees as they had customers, which would be unfeasible, mainly in the case of large organizations that have thousands or millions of customers. But Makina was already saying, you have to build a dialogue with your customers, and from this dialogue, you will not only extract their needs and wishes, but you, all, you will also extract their knowledge. And you will use their knowledge to build better products, still uh, better fit to, to meet those needs and wishes, uh, and also to meet their needs and wishes uh, of the future. Uh, so Web 2.0 is basically using the same technology for different means. Uh, there was very little addition uh, added uh, to, to Web 2.0 in terms of technologies that did not exist already in the, let's say, in the, in the first years of internet use by organizations. It was simply shifting a, a mindset, a shifting, shifting uh, the idea of what could be done uh, based on that technology, right? Uh, and one of the, so, so we, we, uh, I suggested you a few papers to read, uh, O'Reilly 2007, this guy uh, was very influential in the first years of the internet uh, for business and for marketing and, um, and uh, he, in this paper, uh, he, he was able to um, maybe to organize uh, the concepts uh, around Web 2.0 in a way that no one had yet done. Uh, in fact, in the abstract of his paper, he says, this paper is, uh, was the first initiative to try to define Web 2.0 and understand its implications for the next generation of software, looking at both design patterns and business models. Right? Um, I always find it risky to say that whatever we are writing is the first, uh, first attempt, the first initiative, but this guy was there at the, let's say, at the, the, the center of the hurricane. He, he, he was uh, uh, connected to all these people that were building this transformation, uh, so he was sort of aware that uh, at that stage they needed some level of systematization uh, of, uh, of what those companies were doing, and, uh, and uh, at the same time, some organization of um, what, were the, 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 what was the right way to go in terms of Web 2.0. So, so we're, we're going to discuss some of the, the ideas that will really brings in this 2007 paper. Uh, then I also chose uh, uh, a few papers that had 2.0 in their titles. You will see that we have their Enterprise 2.0 uh, by Professor McKee, uh, McAfee. Uh, we have Deci Decisions 2.0 and we have uh, blueprint, uh, blueprint for Customers 2.0. This is not uh, by chance that it happened to be like that. I was looking for Web 2.0 and when I was looking for Web 2.0 and searching for, for papers, uh, these papers ended up being uh, uh, calling my attention also because of the 2.0. Of course, they, they, they also had web and, and internet or whatever in, the, in, 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 in the, their content, which made it uh, easier for these, paper, these papers to appear in front of my eyes. Uh, but let's say the 2.0 in the title here was important. Uh, and um, I decided to include these three papers because Enterprise 2.0 gives us a perspective of, of how companies can organize themselves in order, in order to, to build uh, stronger uh, organizations based on Web 2.0. Right? Uh, Decisions 2.0 uh, tells a little bit uh, 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 or discusses the, the, 
uh, our decision making process, human decision making process, and, and, and basically one thing that Bonabo uh, finds there is that we are probably better at deciding, deciding among alternatives of solutions to a problem than on, on developing those alternatives. Right? Uh, we will discuss uh, this further when we, when we get to this paper in, in detail, but basically what uh, his assumption is that humans have always had to react to changes in the world. They had to take fast decisions to survive in a, in a let's say, in a wild nature. Right? That's part of our DNA. And we keep, uh, uh, we, we, we keep preferring to take our, or it's not a preferring, it's not the word. We, 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 we keep still this trend of deciding quickly uh, which may take us uh, the wrong way. I mean, it, it, you, it was very important when we were there facing a lion in front of us, in the, in, 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 in like, maybe some, somewhere in, in a field in Africa, uh, and to decide if we were going to climb a tree or, or, or just run faster than, than our colleague, right, who was, <laughs> who was the other possibility of lunch for the lion. So there you just had to react quickly. Uh, but nowadays, Although we still need to take decisions quickly in a world that changes fast, uh, if we have the possibility of assessing more alternatives, and mainly if those alternatives were not on created only by own our own biased uh, minds, if, if those alternatives were created by a diversity of, uh, of other people, with different backgrounds, with different biases also, but, uh, but uh, you know, also with different perspectives, we may make better decisions simply because, again, we're good at uh, deciding among uh, choices, but we are not good at defining those choices firsthand. This is the, probably the main argument uh, that Bonabo brings in, in his paper. And, uh, and then, uh, finally, uh, this uh, last paper for today, the, the Blueprint for Customer 2.0, um, uh, is a paper that emphasizes the, the role of a, maybe a, a new uh, kind of consumer that started um, showing up, uh, which was what uh, not only uh, Ripo but uh, many other authors uh, even before already uh, uh, refer to as prosumers, professional consumers. Consumers that in addition to being uh, those who are going to, let's say, to benefit from, from a company's products and services is also someone who, who can help improve those products and services who's willing to help to improve and who has some, let's say, some professional competencies uh, in doing that. Of course, we are not all, um, as consumers, we are not all going, going to be great designers of products, right? Some of, uh, of us have better engineering skills than others. Uh, we may not all be the, the greatest uh, conceptualizers of new, new, new products, but uh, I am sure that many of us can be very good uh, evaluators of uh, products and services. And when we assess the product or service of a company, for example, and we assess that first with that uh, exemption that we have simply because we're not part of the company, right? We're not part of the company and we, we're not someone who has been hired by the company to tell everyone else that their product is good. So um, uh, we, we are, we are also more trustable. Uh, so when companies allow customers to provide their opinions about products, we see that many times at least some of those opinions are very professional. Uh, uh, I remember that uh, a few years ago when I was starting to play the harmonica, uh, I wanted to, I didn't know much about music. I didn't know how to select a good harmonica. There were plenty of different brands. Uh, in addition, there were, of course, different tones for, 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 for the harmonica. It's, it's, it's a, um, uh, it's this, uh, yeah, exactly, it's a, an instrument. Uh, 
and uh, you know, I, I learned a lot from other customers, much more experienced. In fact, many times it was, uh, I went into a, a music uh, uh, instrument shop online uh, and I saw there that there was uh, someone who was telling, uh, some, uh, telling the other users something about one of the products that, uh, that, that was there and they were saying, well, I am a professional musician. I compare this product to, to that other product from a different company and, uh, and, and, and I find, uh, you know, that there are some, the, the good things about this product are these ones and the, 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 the bad things are those. See, uh, it's, it's very valuable. Uh, information it becomes even part of the the, the, the company's um, business proposition. Uh, one company that appears here as an example of uh, uh, of customer 2.0 uh, in Ripple's uh, analysis is probably the company that you're thinking uh, right now, Amazon. Right, Amazon uh, uh, as as a pioneer, but many others copied. Uh, Amazon's uh, assessment system in which uh, customers are are invited to to evaluate the, pro product, the products they buy. Amazon provides an opportunity for many prosumers, professional consumers, to say what they think about products. And uh, and one interesting thing here is that you could say, well, but what happens if people say something bad about the product there? Well, Amazon is the retailer. Amazon is not committed to any of the products uh, itself. Amazon is committed to customer's satisfaction. Am Amazon would like to only sell products that will please the customers, right? So if customers start, start saying that a, a product is a, a, it's a bad business proposition, if, if, and if Amazon therefore finds it difficult to sell new units of that product, it doesn't matter because Amazon is not committed to selling that product specifically. It's Amazon is committed to selling products to customers that will make customers uh, happy to keep buying from Amazon. Uh, I would say that, for example, going back to my harmonica uh, example, uh, Fender or Honor, which are two of the, the, the uh, music instrument uh, companies that that sell harmonicas, or Herring here in Brazil, which is another one, or Suzuki in Japan, they have probably all companies that would be concerned, or could be concerned with the, the, the assessments, the evaluations that prosumers make of their products, because other customers will be influenced by, by those customers' opinions, right? But at the same time, I could also argue that even when a customer provides a bad, let's say, a, a bad review for a product of any company, that could be taken two ways uh, uh, by that company. The company could say, well, these guys are putting our business down, or maybe the company could say, well, these guys are showing that we have to improve our product or that we have to change things in our product, so let's look at that as if it was our quality control or, or our, our let's say, internal um, uh, as quality assessment uh, personal telling us that uh, changes need to be, be made. In any of those cases, we, we, we end up having the figure of, or the, the, here the, the, the character of the prosumer in action because it's, it's a consumer who's acting as a professional in the sense, not a professional, uh, uh, a professional that knows better about the product or anything, simply a professional like someone who's providing the company with insights and information that can help it improve its products the same way as probably its own employees would be interested in doing. Okay, so this is the, the let, let's say the overall uh, uh, picture of our uh, discussion uh, today. Uh, we will start with uh, O'Reilly's. Uh, paper, where, what is Web 2.0, design patterns and business models for the next generation of software. Um, let me just click here and hope that it will open. It does, this, this is it. Uh, except that it's, I don't know what it's, what it's doing here. Okay, except all cookies. So this is the, 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 the paper. 
Um, it's, uh, I think it's, at least for, for us here at UTFPR, it's, it's freely downloadable. Uh, so you, you shouldn't have had any, any problems getting uh, access to it. Uh, this is a long paper. Uh, uh, many of the, let's say, reading this in, in 2023, probably some of the examples he gives, you say, what company is that, right? Because some of these companies are not around any longer. Uh, uh, other companies have be become the, the, gi the giants uh, uh, much after 2007 that they, they mentioned here. Um, but it's still a paper that, uh, considering it, it, it was one, if not the first, one of the first papers to deal with uh, or to make this distinction between Web 2.0 as a mindset, as a way of using the, the internet and, and the web to involve customer suppliers, to, to actually to, 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 to practice collective intelligence, um, it deserves uh, being uh, uh, read in detail. But I will focus mainly uh, on uh, some of the, well, on a summary that the author provides almost in the last page. But, well, but of course, before we get there, on page two, uh, it, uh, I, don't, I don't think that I'll see it straight here if, unless I download it right now. Uh, should I? Uh, oh, let, let me see if it, how, how this will go. Yeah. So, let me go back to this other screen here. And just a second. On the second page, they already show a little difference between uh, some of the services or some of the companies or some of the ideas of Web 2.0 and Web uh, 2.0. Uh, and I think what you have to think of is whatever appears here in Web 2.0 always has a, an intense involvement of the users, users and customers, uh, but users of the web. So Google AdSense makes sense because it, uh, it, it filters the same way as, as, as Google did, Google, the Google search uh, engine did with, uh, with searches. Google AdSense also searched the, you know, the, uh, among the, the, the relevant um, services that should be put in front of the, eye, the eyeballs of uh, any user, but based on what other, uh, uh, other users uh, that had, this, let's say, the same characteristics uh, uh, had seen before. Uh, if we think here, uh, he says, well, MP3, for example, was a technology, uh, let's say, was, was Web 1.0. Napster was the Web 2.0. You, you probably all know about Napster. Napster was one of the original uh, um, uh, companies that, that was based on peer-to-peer -peer sharing of uh, music and sharing of content. Uh, unfortunately, it did not succeed as a business. Maybe because it was, I can't say that it was ahead of its time, it was right at its time, but the, the rest of the world was still behind, right? And uh, so, of course, they faced a lot of uh, uh, legal disputes with uh, the big, um, um, let's say, the, the, the owners of content in a time that the owners of, of content had not still figured out new ways or new business models in which they could profit from, from the, the material they had. Yeah, go on. Metallica uh -huh. in, the, in her shows, uh -huh. uh, protesting about Napster. Protesting against Napster. Against yeah, Napster. yeah. And think, uh, I mean, most of these uh, these bands, uh, and, and 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 I would say bands like heavy heavy rock bands, they should be the first ones to say, "Gee, this is going to be, this is the future for us." It probably would not be the future for someone who played. A, not an electronic, a regular guitar sitting on a you know, on a chair for a small uh, for a, for a small let's say for a, a small audience. But for people, for, for, for rock bands, for example, that can put a hundred thousand people in a in a soccer stadium, 
uh, why would they bother selling their music, uh, which only makes the let's say the the the, the industry, of the, the music industry, rich, not necessarily the, the, the priest. For them, it should be, my music is free, and uh, it's free for you to, to listen before so that you get accustomed to, the, to, to our sound, and then you go and, and go to, to, a, to a rock uh, concerts later, simply because you already like our music. So, see, it's, we can't say that it's lack of vision. Uh, well, it, it definitely is. But it's, it's, really, it's difficult to have the vision of the future when we are still too stuck with the ideas from the, the past, right? Uh, of course, the, 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 the companies that succeeded here were either the, the initial developers of Web 2.0 or companies that were able to follow very shortly uh, behind. Let's say Napster did not succeed, but uh, Spotify did, right? later on, and, and, and Spotify wouldn't even be a, a possibility if Napster had not been there uh, before, and not, not only Napster, I think Spotify in, in Sweden, in Sweden they had this, there was another, I think it was, I don't, I don't recall if it was Music Pirates or, uh, they had another. Pirates Bay. Pirates Bay, Pirates Bay, Pirates Bay right. So Pirates Bay, Pirates Bay also, it was sort of on, on the track of peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, but again, uh, they, had, they had not sorted out a, a business model that would uh, accommodate the interests of many other powerful players. So Spotify was much cleverer in the, the, the way it ended up involving the, the music industry and saying, look, you are, we, we're either going the Napster direction, which was pirate base uh, uh, proposition as well. In, in, other, in, in other terms, there is no way you can control uh, content any longer because you will have to sue individuals and, and it's going to be millions or billions of individuals around the world. Have fun, right? Uh, because it's going to be them. Uh, or we will find a way of organizing things and, 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 and Spotify much later was probably the, the, the successful let's say, successor of, uh, of Napster and some of those early. But the idea was already there because uh, Spotify itself uh, ended up, uh, although it's not, Spotify is not peer-to-peer -peer in the sense that uh, it, it's also, it's possible to be like that. I mean, anyone can include, if you're, if you're a, uh, a garage band, you can include your, your material and allow others to, to, to have access to it. But uh, it ended up, uh, it, it, this is a company that was able to, to, to understand that uh, the revolution that Web 2.0 would uh, cause would still be sort of, uh, I mean, there would still be other forces uh, that were strong enough to, to, to shape uh, the direction we were going with things, right? Uh, I find it interesting, and, and this will appear a lot, not only in this uh, paper, but also in, in some of the others that you read, uh, Web 1.0 based mainly on uh, categorizations or pre-performed pre, pre categorizations. So was someone had already decided how you were going to see things on a website, for example. And Web 2.0 being based here on tagging, which means each user goes there and creates its own categories or his or her own categories. Uh, for a specific content and by creating their own categories they help others who may be who may be searching based on those categories in fact I think that uh, tagging uh, could be what would would lead us uh, to a, a web 3.0 I mean if you look at the internet you will find 3.0, Web 3.0 is a term that is already around, uh, has been around for quite a while, but different authors, I mean, Web 2.0, everyone says it's, it's, it's the internet as a platform, uh, it's the users in control, it's the users, uh, it, it is strategies that emerge from the crowds, so, so Web 2.0 was the, let's say, the, the beginning of collective intelligence uh, on, on the web, and, and the, let's say, the, it, it was actually the, the, the dreamers of the internet's uh, principles coming through, 
uh, because they wanted a, a, a let's say a, a democratic web where the user ruled and not not not, not the, the you know and 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 what and the content was not dictated by by a few um, powerful entities right? but uh, what what ta uh, uh, tagging uh, could could help us doing is one of the possibilities of web 3.0 uh, that leads to to, to the semantic web, right? uh, a web uh, where we don't search by content specifically, but by meaning, uh, and meaning that is given to things by people. Right? Um, but again, uh, uh, although many authors claim that we, we would go uh, that way, uh, things did not evolve as fast as one could think. Uh, and, and and now we have, of course, um, um, artificial intelligence getting into this. Uh, so you know, artificial intelligence sort of competes with collective intelligence because collective intelligence thinks of humans thinking, right? Although we can say that uh, artificial intelligence is part or or rely or depends on collective intelligence because it went there to the web. To collect all the collective intelligence to start generating new 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 intelligence, so, so there's we, we could possibly also argue that uh, artificial intelligence is not artificial intelligence; it is collective intelligence automated. Okay, uh, that could be a, a at least one of the possibilities of looking at uh, artificial intelligence. This may again we may be talking about uh, a new technology that. It was in the labs for very long, but as it became um, a, a, a technological possibility more recently, uh, we may see a, I don't know if it's going to be a web 3 or 4.0, or whatever, how they want to, to coin the new term, it may be more influenced by this machine uh, driven, um, let's say, Evolution than necessarily on us as individuals, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we as a, a, a academics many times we are not that original. We would have got stuck with Web uh, 1.0 and, and and think that that was good. We usually observe what what creative people are doing, and then we see, and after we observe them doing, we can say, well, see that's the that seems to be the the, the right way to go, but we usually. There's some lagging time there uh, happening, so I wouldn't dare say where we're going from from now. But the, 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 it's easy f now for us to explain how we came from Web 1.0 to Web 2.0, because whatever you see here, let's say you, you see Britannica online, that was something that was done by a few and broadcasted to a lot of people, and then at the other and here we see uh, Wikipedia. Well, that's something that is done by lots of people uh, uh, and which ends up having the same power or, or maybe even more power, for, more power than, than Britannica Online as, as it actually happened, right? Uh, Wikipedia became much more relevant over time uh, than any of the encyclopedia that we had beforehand. Um, so this, this table, although some of the, the the examples that they give here, uh, we we can only relate to if we read the whole paper where they, they explain each one of them. We don't even remember those. For example, I don't, I, at this moment I don't even remember old photo any longer, right? Uh, but the difference uh, here between old photo and Flickr is that Flickr was a peer-to-peer -peer thing. It, it, it was uh, the collective intelligence use of something that otherwise would be uh, static. Uh, so let's go straight to that's what I think is a summary on the last page of the paper. Here, presented here in the conclusions, right? Uh, so the author says, in exploring the seven principles above, uh, we'll highlight some of the principal features of Web 2.0. Each of the examples we've explored demonstrates one or more of those key principles, 
but uh, may miss others. Let's close, therefore, by summarizing what we believe to be the core competencies of Web 2.0 companies. So, in which way they are different to other companies that use the Web and technology only to do more of the same, whilst these companies here were doing different things, were being creative, were exploring, uh, exploring before exploiting, while the others were just trying to exploit. Okay? Uh, services, not packaged software, uh, with cost-effective scalability. Uh, again, uh, if we had to think here, we, we could possibly uh, include uh, an, exam an example of that would be Microsoft Office would be the old concept, uh, Google Docs would be the new concept okay, in, the, in terms of uh, uh, Microsoft Office. Of course, Microsoft Office the way it used to be. Of course, nowadays, Microsoft Office has a, a proposition that's probably much more, let's say, based on on the possibilities of sharing documents, and but still, I would say it's it's an old con concept adapted. While Google uh, Docs was already thought of as a a, a a word processor to be used by teams and and where people could work together uh, and, and could work together at the same time on the on the same document. I don't know if you recall, but uh, until recently. If someone opened a, a Word document, someone else that tried to, to have access to the same document would say, well, I will open a second version of this here, but keep in mind that whatever changes you make, you will have to save as a different file. So it did not allow for collaboration. Okay? Um, so this, this idea of, uh, of services and not packaged software changes a lot also in terms of if it's going to be a service, I can start offering it straight away and I keep improving it. I do not have to have a stable version before it can be launched. In fact, uh, if I'm uh, providing services to customers, I can, if I have a, a, a new idea that, that I want to test, I can make that available to a few um, users somewhere uh, and, uh, and then if I see that they, they like the idea, I expand that service to others. Otherwise, if I if I notice that people were not interested, I, I stop putting effort into that and, and decide to put effort somewhere else. Again, I'm using the customers to tell us to tell me uh, what is important uh, to them them and what they want to will want to use. Uh, uh, another an another characteristic characteristic here: control over unique, hard to recreate data sources that get richer and uh, as more people use them. So network effect is very important here again because network effect goes along very well with collective intelligence. Collective intelligence happens when you do have the network effect of many people using, many people contributing and because then each one of them can contribute with very little and in an aggregated uh, way uh, everyone well, together everyone could, uh, makes great contributions and, and makes the, the, the system develop fast. Notice this, this point here is very important, trusting users as co-developers. Users should be treated as co-developers. Uh, I had uh, a, a, a student, uh, a doctoral student uh, a few years ago, uh, Ricardo Engelbert, <coughs> who who used to, who, who was studying the adoption of technology in, in and by organizations. And uh, one of the things he noticed from the beginning was that, of course, the owner or, or the manager adopted the technology, uh, adopted in the way that they chose the technology, and then users had to simply accept it. Accept, we, we've already decided, right? Now you just have to accept to use it. And, and we say, of course, users can still accept or not because users can say, sorry, I will not use this crazy system. Nah, I'll go away. Don't, don't, don't want to work to this company any longer. This, this would be very radical. Or they may say, well, the boss uh, has chosen this software. I don't like it very much. But I know that if I don't use it, I'll be fired. Or maybe my boss will be unpleased. So I'll, I'll use it to the extent that I find reasonable. 
right? So, so even acceptance is not digital in the sense that you either accept enthusiastically or you reject the technology. You, you may have, maybe for more complex systems, you may use part of it and, and not use other parts and still uh, go around and, and, and not have your boss too unpleased. But that what, was what he noticed and, and he said users were willing to help improve the software but the developers and here I, you know most of many of you here many of those of you who are in applied computing your developers the developers thought it has to be my way right i am the developer here if the user is trying to use something in a, in a, in a different way they're they're cheating they're trying to let's say to they're, they're trying to sabotage what i'm doing and so i will include extra uh, barriers there to, to stop them from, from doing things that I don't want them to do. That is the traditional way of uh, looking at that. I am in control. That's very 1.0 in terms of relationship with customers. Right? Uh, and, that, that, and that worked when you, when you had, uh, let's say, licensed versions or upgrades of software. You decided all on your own and you just imposed it on, on people afterwards. When you think of software as a platform, uh, the customer, you, you can see what customer is doing in real time. So if the customer is not pleased with some of the features that you include in the software, you can very easily change them uh, so that the customer uh, gets more pleased. Or you can replace them by, by something else. You can even see many times when we say trust users as co-developers, by seeing how they're using your software, uh, you can even uh, uh, include some of the ideas of that, that come from their behavior into your development uh, process. So what Ricardo saw there, and th this was about 10 years ago in his uh, doctoral studies, was that companies, developers, software developers, wasted a huge opportunity of involving customers uh, in their own development. But of course, the software that he was studying was still, let's say, uh, a web 1.0 kind of uh, software. It was um, it was a, a let's say one of these learning uh, in the online learning environments. In fact, a platform like a little like Moodle that was used by another university uh, here in, in, in Curitiba. Uh, but it was still it, it was a, a software that they developed for their own use. So. Let's say the owners of the software, the, the university itself, wanted to impose uh, its spirit into the software. It wanted that, that software to be its face. And it did not acknowledge that the professors themselves, who were the users of that uh, tool, thought that the university was slightly or very different to what the system was trying to impose. And they were trying to use it it's not that they were sabotaging the system, but they were trying to use the parts of the system that they thought helped them um, do what they thought that was important and not paying attention to other parts that they thought that were silly or that would only uh, lead to, to the standardization, sorry, standardization of, of the educational process or whatever. But again, that was uh, software as a package yet that was not software as uh, you know as a service and therefore the uh, the developers had little even little opportunity to see how how strong customers could be as co-developers and here they're talking about co-developers remember I, I said we're going to talk about the the, the prosumers later co-developers are let's say prosumers are are users that become producers as well right um, and then another, another uh, topic here that, that he noticed, look, uh, harnessing the collective intelligence of, of course, if, if I want to turn the users as co-developers, that's already happening. Leveraging the long tail through uh, customer uh, self-service. I'm not sure if you're familiar with this term long tail for, for business in general. Um, all products, when they're brought to the market, there is uh, an initial uh, 
an, an initial period of in the introduction to the market where there are still not many customers. Customers still have to understand the product. So there is this introduction process, uh, process in which uh, the company tries to increase the numbers of, uh, of users of its, its, its products. Then after a, a while it gets to, let's say, it gets to a stage where the product is already understood by the market and, and become, actually it's when it becomes profitable. Before that it's the introduction period, period you still have to do a lot of marketing, you have to convince the customer to, to buy. After everyone understands the value of the, the product, then it's the time that where you have it as a, a, a milking cow that you will be able to take the milk every day and, and it may take a while but later the product is going to, to, to get into a decline phase again uh, possibly because new better products uh, arrived uh, maybe because simply there's a lot of competition for the, the user's attention and, your, and customers decided to buy something else uh, and then uh, in, in that decline period in the past companies had to make a decision at, at, at one time they would have to make a decision should we stop producing this product or service uh, because the cost of, of producing was probably becoming smaller than the profit that one could get from because of the, 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 the small scales involved. So uh, when that happened in the past, even if there were still uh, 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 users or consumers who would be interested in the product, they would not have a chance of buying it, it, it any longer. <coughs> now I have a question for you. Do you think that if you want to buy a video cassette recorder these days, today, is it still possible? Only on uh, used retail or antique stores, but on the market. Yeah, I, I don't know about the video cassette recorder. Maybe this was not a the best uh, example because what would still make someone buy a video cassette recorder these days? As a, like a LP, it has a special sound, but it's, it's just like... Yeah, the, the video, with the video cassette recorder, there was no uh, better experience. You may say, I, see, I want a video cassette recorder because I still have some old tapes, right? One problem with, the, with the, these tapes is that because they're magnetic, uh, maybe uh, these tapes are not good any longer, right? But, so maybe a better example would be the long play for, 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 for out audio, right? Can you still buy uh, the traditional long play players? Yeah, new versions of it, but they are way more expensive than the usual Netflix. Well, they're, they're more expensive because the scales involved are, 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 are not large enough. Mm -hmm. But you can. This is, again, all, all of this to, to say this is the long tail. There, there are not many people who want it, but nowadays, well, first you can find them actually in the world because uh, you, through the internet you can buy from anywhere in the world so even if it, there is only one manufacturer that produces them you you're going to be able to, to find it so this is the, the long tail idea for example bookstores online bookstores can uh, can can have they, they can actually have all uh, books that, that 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 once existed simply because Nowadays, well, it's electronic, and saving electronic uh, files is very cheap. So if, if anyone wants to buy one day, you, you just have to give access to, to, to that file. And, and, they, and, and, and even if they want a printed copy, there's no problem. I mean, uh, uh, the, 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 the long tail thing says, you want a, 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 a printed copy? Well, I will produce one book for you with the code, everything, I'll produce one and send it to you. It will cost more, but the fact is, it's possible to keep selling even if the, 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 the numbers are small. I would say that there, there probably is someone, if you want to buy a, a, a VCR, video cassette recorder, there's probably some factory around the world that still says, well, you know, if there are people that are willing to buy it, uh, I can still sell them. I will be the only seller in the world it's going to be more expensive than buying, uh, definitely than buying the new technology. So someone has to have a good reason 
to, to buy that. But if they're willing to pay, I will. I'm happy to produce only a hundred of those a month. Right? In the past it would be, if I can't produce a hundred thousand a month, it's not feasible. But now they, they say, well, look, I, I already have the, the, the machinery there. If someone asks, I don't know. So the long tail thing is we can benefit from, from selling even after the decline of a product simply because now we can have the, 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 the whole world market for, 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 uh -huh. for that. That long tail refers to like the graph tail. Exactly. Because yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If you, okay. uh, it's yeah. Let's let, let me just quickly try and show here on the on the board if I can. Uh, uh, extension of the pro product life. Exactly. It's it's, it's if, you, if you use the the product life. Uh, See if I can. Let me see what what I have. If I go like that. No, this is not working. Uh, if you uh, get a white white page. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I just want to. I, I want to, to do this very quickly. Let me see if I. But the thing mm -hmm. is, finding a white page. <laughs> uh, no, you know what I'll do. When I, when when we're not prepared to do oh, it. You can uh, search a uh, long tail. No, you know, if I just go, what what I'll do here, I'll, I'll open a Google blank page here. Google. This this is this is going to be why not? It's a, basically what I want to show. Is only the, the graph in which you have the time here uh, and you have the product being introduced. And let's say if we were thinking about uh, well, money money is not the, the, the because now now let's say the, the Number of, uh, of because let's say at the beginning it's little, then it's a lot, and then it comes to decline. And the, the, the long tail, this part here, it is something that usually um, uh, companies at, at some stage they would decide it's not worth, let's say, not worth producing any longer because to, to meet the requirements of such little people, I'm talking here about number of people, right? Uh, I, I didn't use money there because in the past there was no money here now there is because this became cheaper either because we well this was digitized so in the case of books for example it's digital now so the content was already produced the author has already uh, written this in the past uh, all the expenses have already been incurred so i just have to save it and when someone wants uh, I, I, but even for other products for 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 example, one product that I noticed that, it, that you can buy these days, you know that Santos Dumont oh, really? bicycle. You can buy one of those. Do you believe? Wow. Of course, it's produced. It's something that is produced these days. You are going to pay very expensive. It's going to be much more expensive. But I mean, there's someone says, well, there is a little long tail here. There is someone crazy in the world that wants something like that. Why not? This was the, the only time that you saw me write on the boards during the whole semester. And I don't know even if, it, if they could see it from. Was that okay? Could you see it from, from there? <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Um, right, so with respect to, to Aurelius. Uh, Paper. Uh, oh, th then we have still software. Ab sorry, software above the level of a single device. So it's not the the Microsoft Logic from from the past. I. Uh, professor. Yep. Uh, I was going to ask you to swap to your. All right. Okay. Uh, and um, so again, no, no, no more Microsofts. At least no more Microsofts. The way Microsoft used to work in the 80s and 90s. I'd say probably Microsoft uh, wasted a lot of time until understanding that Web 2.0 was around or that the internet would change the rules of the game. But it's, that's also understandable. Usually companies that are very 
uh, that, that have uh, acquired a very strong position in the markets, uh, it's difficult for them to say, well, I, now I understand that the, the world has gone a different way. Uh, I want to go there also, but I will have to, uh, I'll level the ground, I'll, I'll, I'll compete as, a, as, as if, if I were a newcomer. They, they will usually insist on their old model, right? Because uh, otherwise they become, it's almost like the boss who, who, who knows that there is a, let's say, in a, in a computer um, uh, company, uh, let's say a software development company, he knows that there are new, uh, new um, programming languages that are better than, than the ones that the company uses, but, but he says, you know, we'll stick to the, the, what we already have because we have already developed a, a lot of uh, work using that technology. Uh, so, so they're sort of become slaves of their own decisions of the past, right? Uh, besides, he also thinks, I know a lot of the, the old technology, the new technology only my intern there knows, right? I, I, I know less than, than, than the kids that I just hired. So if I decide we're going to change to something that they know and I don't, I lose power. So there's a lot of uh, issues involved. The, the, the organization loses its power. It, its decision makers lose it, its power, so all of those uh, go against uh, the changes that, 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 that could happen and that they know that will end up happening anyway. Uh, and then a light, uh, last item here, they say lightweight interfaces, uh, development models and business uh, models. So this, this was O'Reilly's um, paper, I think, again, uh, it's, it's interesting for the history. Um, uh, it was probably in 2007 uh, still very visionary because many of the companies that had failed uh, the, the NASDAQ uh, bubble in, in, in 1999 and, and, and the 2000, 2001, when, when we had the, the NASDAQ crash, most of the, those companies had still not realized why they had failed, right? Well, they didn't exist any longer, but uh, these guys here helped us start understanding what, were the, what was making other companies successful after that. Then we have uh, McAfee's uh, paper, uh, Enterprise 2.0, The Dawn of Emergency, of, of Emergent Collaboration. This is it. I want to summarize some of the ideas of, let me just, uh, of, of this paper by, by McAfee. Um, I think that uh, the main contribution here is uh, what he calls the SLATES, SLATES, S-L-A-T-E-S. -E it's an acronym that he generates to talk about things that he finds as being the important Web 2.0 tools that could make enterprise, enterprises more effective in the future, enterprises, companies, right, uh, more effective. Um, and of course, he's thinking about what people could do in their intranets. The, the, the internet was at this stage in 2006, 2007, uh, the internet was already very 2.0, but were the companies already, you know, becoming more, let's say, more Web 2.0 also? Uh, he claimed that not. He claimed that that depended a lot of, on, of course, on, on the culture and on ver several uh, issues related to the companies, but he thought that companies could build their intranets or their, their internal systems uh, around the same principles that were already driving uh, Web 2.0 for the, the internet to which all of us had access as regular users, right? So he talks about these uh, uh, six uh, um, tools that would differentiate the enterprise 2.0 uh, from, from previous attempts of use of technology in, in organizations. Uh, it's late as for search. Uh, he's actually talking about thinking of the, this intranet as a knowledge management uh, system, right? He says people in the organization, we, we can 
tra traditionally, uh, uh, or, or, or uh, uh, companies that were, th were thinking of the internet technology with a web 1.0 mind, let's say the manager published the content. The users or the, the employees looked at what the manager had included or, or, or whatever had been included as a, a fixed content by someone that the manager told you, you update the website or whatever. So, it, or, or, um, so it, it, traditionally it used to be the manager does the others, again, it, same, lo same broadcasting logic, one, one includes and the others just see. Uh, and what they're thinking here is, can, can we involve everyone in doing that? So first, everyone should, should find it easy to search the, the company system and find whatever relates to the problems that they're having now so that they can base their decisions on decisions that others took before. Uh, then another, another principle is uh, the information in this uh, system should be linked and, and people should be able to link things. Right? If I find that a specific topic relates to, to another topic that is, let's say, that, 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 that is uh, under the control of a different department or whatever, I can link this to that. I, I, I can make these references so that I can easily assess what is um, uh, available elsewhere. Uh, there should be uh, tools that allow people to to become authors, uh, so authoring tools uh, on the web. Uh, the possibility of uh, any, any worker, any employee writing, let's say a little blog. Blogs tend to be individual, right? But still, uh, if Celso believes that, uh, uh, that um, uh, someone else in the company can, can benefit from information that, that he has, what he does, he writes that information in a, in a place where other, uh, th that others can access. So blogs as individual contributions, or why not collective contributions of a department or wikis, right? Wikis are also tools that allow for authorship because uh, the users can be part of the creation of the content and not only uh, passive targets to the content that, that is already available. So SLA, uh, search, links, authoring tools, tagging tools. Remember, uh, uh, really uh, had already mentioned that tagging is important. If, uh, if I, as a, as, as, a, as a user, have the feeling that I, that, that I, I have to come here to this uh, paper, for example, that is available to the, the whole enterprise and include here a tag that quickly, uh, that, that will also help searching afterwards, others searching or myself, uh, that is a tool that we should uh, have available because this tagging will allow for a folksonomy to be created. Folksonomy is a word that, ha that probably appeared in several of these papers, right? Uh, does anyone know German? Volks, you know Volkswagen. What, what is Volkswagen? People. <laughs> Volkswagen is the, the car, Wagen, Wager, Wagen is car, the car of the people, right? Volksonomy is a taxonomy, it's a categorization that is developed by the people. So it's an emergent categorization. Uh, again, Web 2.0 allows for this emergent, give, give power to the people, right? Categories should emerge. You, you can have the traditional categories that were there included by the specialists. But what if the users don't care for the specialists' categorization? Or what if they have better ideas of how to organize the material that they will use in their own work? So they should have ways of doing that. And when they organize things for, their, for themselves, that could also help the organization of the work of others. Right? Remember, and we'll talk more about this in, in, our, in, in one of our next classes, people do things for money, love, or glory. You may be categorizing things in your work because you think that that will make it easier for you to work. But when you do that for you, if the, the, if the system is capable of 
understanding that, it can also use that to suggest categorization by other people. Think that after someone, someone is hired to work in the, in the same department as yours, to perform about the same, same activities that you do, uh, and think that you, during the, the five years that you have already worked on this company, you have included a lot of tags in the, in the like, I'm calling it intranet, I think that the, this name is a little old-fashioned possibly, but, uh, uh, but you, you have tagged the, 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 the company's system with uh, including, let's say, bookmarks uh, in, uh, in places that you, you need to, to go to, to, ref to, to refer uh, often or places that you, you, you have to consult. And then this new employee comes in and he's going to work the next desk, desk close to you. Maybe the company could say, oh, you know, uh, your colleague there has already bookmarked this. We're going to provide you with the, those bookmarks because we, we think that it may make your life easier. And then this person will benefit from the book, uh, bookmarking that, is, that has already been made by the, the, the colleague. He or she may change it and, and after he changes, it's almost like the Amazon evaluation process, right? Uh, there's someone evaluating, then there's, a, there's another user evaluating the quality of the evaluation. So maybe someone else using your bookmarks could uh, still rank them and say that they're good or they're not, or they, are, they, they help me or they don't, uh, and that could help a, a third person still. So this is tagging. Uh, and then uh, uh, they also think that one important thing in a system like that would be the possibility of extending. Extending meaning those who are interested in this topic or those who need this kind of content may also be interested in some, in, in, in some other content. So this extension and, and, and of course your, the system may learn this from other users. right? Uh, and finally, uh, signaling. If something new uh, appears in the system and that could interest you, you should be warned somehow. So this uh, search, links, authorship, uh, these are all tools. Tools for searching, tools for, for linking, tools for authoring, tools for tagging, tools for extending, and tools for signaling. These are the tools that uh, McAfee uh, considered to be uh, important uh, to to allow for an emerging see it's emerging because everyone gets involved right it's it's tools that you're going to give to each of the the users so that they improve their relationship with the system and maybe with other users of uh, of the system okay and it provides for emergent knowledge we'll all companies uh, benefit from emerging knowledge, I don't know, there, there are different cultures, different companies have different cultures, there are, there are companies that are very hierarchical uh, and it's the boss who thinks and everyone else only executes what the boss thought. So the boss of a company like that would say garbage, throw this away. Huh? By the way, this would, uh, the, the people would start challenging my, my decision making because everyone will start so for a company that is, is, uh, um, has, has a very strong uh, hierarchical structure, this will probably not work. For companies that are, and, and those companies tend to be companies more related to the more traditional industrial revolution. But companies that depend on each of their employees' knowledge, companies that depend on each of the, their employees' Uh, coordination of their, uh, their activities with, with others or sharing uh, of knowledge with others, for those, uh, those are the kinds of companies that probably uh, already have a culture that is more emerging in terms of the strategies are not defined by the boss. Strategies are thought by, by the body of specialists. It's, it's a company, let's say, that does, the workers are not, uh, the, the workers are sophisticated uh, laborers. Right? They're, they're all workers of the information era. They are not bricklayers, and nothing against bri uh, bricklayers, but they're not, they're not people that are using only their muscles. They're using their minds to what they're doing, uh, and therefore 
uh, should uh, or, or, or or could could you help help the company a lot with their ideas? So um, at the very beginning of the paper, uh, uh, McAfee already tells us a little bit about this bank who who was introducing this kind of, trying try, trying to introduce this kind of system. Uh, and uh, for example, they, they they had an idea that it would be good uh, if they could. Um, if they could uh, show who was, see, see here, let's say, who was present, let's say, who was available at that time. So, something that, for example, we see in social networks that you see that a friend is, there's a green light next to, then also, so I can talk to that person right away. So someone gave an idea about that on, uh, on a meeting, right? And they say, so, and then they say at 10.44, uh, long time, whatever, uh, this guy said, well, look, I, already, I, I have something here that is, it's still a, a, a let's say, a, a prototype, but I think with this, whatever I have here, I can already sort of solve that problem. And then someone else, less than, or about an hour later, someone else says, yeah, I saw what you, you did, I changed it a little bit, and now, uh, and now, now, now let's show this to, 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 to the big boss, right? So what they're saying is that you can have much more, uh, an organization can become much more dynamic if you use, if someone has already done something in the past that can help, it was for a different project, but, uh, and this person becomes aware that uh, the, the company needs that, this person can bring, uh, bring that, and then someone else can bring another improvement, and a few hours later, they already had the system running, right? much different to what would happen if they did not have this collaborative uh, environment where the uh, where slates was there available to them right slates as search link authoring uh what is a uh, search link authoring can't remember what that's, lay, uh, tagging extending and sigma okay um, another paper uh of course it, it talks a little bit about this so th this change in mind from the from broadcasting to to narrow casting, but at the same time, uh, after you narrow cast, and then someone, uh, and then the possibility of, of broadcasting from the narrow casting. So it says that there sometimes you need channels to to communicate one to one. Other times we need uh, it to be open to to everyone. So. Uh, uh, they claim here that sometimes we're using channels to communicate, other times we use platform when, when it becomes uh, something that will involve more people. And then they provide a lot of examples of when to use these things. Uh, the whole paper goes about explaining the, 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 the six characteristics related to the slates. Um, and at the end, there is some discussion of uh, challenges and opportunities, uh, problems that uh, may be related to, to, to this kind of um, technology. You want people involved, but then sometimes you have busy knowledge uh, workers. Let me just go straight there. Page 27. So here among the challenges, sometimes you have here, busy knowledge workers won't use, sorry, let's see, uh, won't use the new technology despite uh, training and uh, prodding. Uh, most people who use the internet today aren't bloggers, Wikipedians or taggers. So, I mean, if you, you, you train them to do that, but they say they're not used to that. And, and besides, they're busy. So, it's... It's not that simply because, uh, because it's there that people are going to use it. You have to, 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 to train, but you, you, there, is, th th there has to be some uh, ways of motivating people. Maybe you have to choose uh, a department or a group that is a little more enthusiastic to start doing that with, with them and then showing the others. Same things that we do maybe with large developments, um, uh, computer software developments that we know that are going there's going to be a lot of problems, but we, we already need someone excited about it. So we, we start with a group that we think that will be uh, users that will, be, will help us, and then we, we, we take it elsewhere. 
And another thing that they say here is that uh, another threat is that uh, knowledge workers might use enterprise technology as, exactly as intended, but this may lead to this may lead to where is it? unintended outcomes. Unintended outcomes from the perspective of the traditional decision maker. When we make decision making a process that involves a lot of people, I lose control, right? So are decision makers in the organizations uh, willing to, or, or, or do they understand that they may, may lose control and are they prepared to lose control? Because otherwise, I mean, you, you, you create uh, a slate system and then uh, when, 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 when people start engaging and, and giving their, br bringing uh, new ideas and they're all enthusiastic about, about it, then you say, oh no, this is going a, a different way that I didn't expect, so let's shut that down, right? Doesn't, won't work. So uh, it, this is why uh, this is something that will probably work better if the culture of the organization is already a, a culture of emerging uh, strategies or a, a lot of uh, decision making uh, done by, by everyone involved and so on and so forth. Right? So uh, Enterprise uh, 2.0 uh, gives voice to people. Are the companies uh, willing to hear them? Right? Because if they aren't, of course, this won't, won't, uh, won't, won't work. Uh, we have to think that no one can shut down the internet, right? But the boss can shut down the the enterprise 2.0 or, or the intranet. The boss, uh, so uh, people should be aware uh, that this could happen. Yeah? Um, I think this these are the main ideas of, of McAfee. I, uh, in fact, you will see that I try to few semesters ago, I was very inspired by this paper by McAfee when I first tried to build the, the our, our uh, Moodle page for this course. Right? I tried to include whatever part of slates that I could there. I have to admit uh, that although there is a lot, uh, I mean, each time I get to one of those wikis that I have there, I say, well, someone included something else here. Uh, I have to admit that um, I have not had the energy to to keep it uh, to, to keep motivating uh, it to, to work the way it should. But uh, and, and I have well not the energy, maybe the time and the you know uh, I've been involved with uh, many different things that caught my attention and and, and I, I I couldn't be working with this the way I, I, I think we needed to for something. To, for this, uh, like this, to, to really prosper. But let's say wh what I'm trying to say is that uh, leadership is important in an organization. If you want to have something like what uh, McAfee proposes here in an organization, the leadership of the organization have to be willing to do it, and and and, and it will, will have to be clear to everyone that that's something that is being emphasized, that that that, that is being valued, and that there. Are, the time that they put into it is going to be uh, acknowledged because otherwise it may be something that will start and then people will forget about it. Right? It depends. We are all self-interested uh, people who have our own uh, concerns, our own problems. Uh, and if, if, we're not, if we do not collectively put energy into building something large collectively, uh, this is probably going to be um, left aside. In fact, this maybe the, the, lar the, the, the largest challenge that we have with collective intelligence, intelligence projects is keeping people motivated. Right? So I, I admit that now, for example, if you get into one of the wikis that we have there and you include something there, one, one thing, and of course, Moodle is not a tool that, that had this in mind. Right? So I would wish it had, for example, some signaling tool that told me each time one of you included a new information in a, let's say, in, in a wiki, because then I could go there 
and, uh, and thank you and, and, and react to that. If you do that once and you see that the next response that you have to that, uh, for that is a student three semesters from now that we're going to read that, what will be your you know, um, motivation to keep doing? Uh, so, this is to say that we, uh, it's, it's, it's not simply because you build the infrastructure that it will, will, things will happen. There is a lot of effort into making sure that people are involved, engaged, and so on and so forth. Um, all right, so this was uh, Enterprise 2.0. Then we had uh, decisions 2.0, Bonabo 2009. What we have there. Uh, Bonabo 2009, he has. Uh, it's that paper that I said, it starts saying that humans tend to take decisions fast, which was very good to make us survive uh, in times of uh, wild nature, uh, but maybe not necessarily the best way of taking decisions these days, uh, although it's probably so embedded in our DNA that we still, uh, we are still very reflexive, uh, reactive in, in taking decisions. Uh, we're not bad at taking decisions uh, fast, considering that we have good alternatives or that we have, we have already had opportunities in the past of assessing those alternatives. Uh, but we are not, uh, Bonabo claims, we're not as good as generating those alternatives. We're not as, as creative in general. So uh, he claims that it's good if we can involve a lot of people in generating alternatives and then after we have all those different alternatives, we can just come in to take the decisions, if, even if the decision is going to be taken by uh, uh, one or a, a small group of, uh, of people. Right? Um, so our brains uh, are wired to avoid complexity, but our networks are not. Right? So what we can do now is, okay, our brain, doesn't want complexity, but if we can, if we are organized with other humans in a complex way, uh, that complexity there is not going to be seen by e each of us, and and we can still generate a lot of uh, ideas, generate ideas, and then decide on those those ideas. Uh, the main uh, points of the paper is, uh, I mean, the, the, the author spends, uh, will, will think that there are th three things that are very important for, for us in this process. Uh, outreach, and outreach means reach out to people that have different ideas. Outreach is get diverse perspectives. Don't only react to whatever you already have in your mind. Uh, aggregation, aggregation has a lot to do with the wisdom of crowds that we have already studied. And uh, self-organization. Uh, so, so, uh, the paper spends quite some time talking about these three terms. Um, basically, the decision-making process, uh, which involves generating uh, solutions, uh, depends on first uh, uh, defining alternatives, right? So, uh, they say that we have three, uh, sorry, sorry, we have a few problems in our decision-making process. Um, the first one of them being we are uh, what, what we call self-serving bias. Uh, what is uh, what is uh, self-service um, uh, bias? We let me just think, show you here. Uh, here he claims, where is it? We tend, we, to, we tend to seek information that confirms our assumptions and to maintain those beliefs 
uh, even in face of uh, contrary evidence. So first, we, 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 we try to get information that confirm what we already, what we already know. That's horrible, right, for decision making. Uh, we just, basically, we, we just want the world to tell us, yes, what you, what you have already decided to do is right. Uh, so the self-servicing bias is a huge problem. Uh, but but it, it, it gets even worse because we have this belief pers perseverance, which means that we keep our we keep our, our beliefs even when we see contrary evidence. So we have evidence that is showing us something different, but we still keep thinking the same way. Uh, those uh, two characteristics uh, probably are um, the reasons for us to recommend get diversity. Right? Get other people to, to, to make you understand that the way you're thinking is only one of the perspectives. Be aware that things can be different to, to what you believe to be right. Uh, and then uh, uh, he also says that uh, we have this pattern obsession. Where is that? So with respect to the, the evaluation of, uh, of solutions, we tend to see patterns where they do not exist. We see patterns where they don't exist, which means we are biased originally, and then we find patterns. Have you heard that thing, uh, that, that uh, saying that a, statistic, uh, a, st a statistician uh, can torture the data the way he or she wishes to tell the truth that he or she wants to to be told, right? So uh, it's uh, our, our pattern obsession will allow us to find ways in which to keep believing in our in, in our biases, simply because there's always a way you can organize data to prove that. There is a book, uh, How to Lie with Statistics. So How to Lie with the Statistics. Yeah, I've I've seen that. I haven't read it, but I've I've, I've seen that. Um, and there's still another issue here. That so, uh, in addition to, to to the fact that we tend to see patterns where they do where they, they don't exist, uh, we are unduly influenced by how a solution is presented, which uh, the author here calls framing. Um, remember our the population of Turkey uh, example, right? After you, I, I've already prepared your minds to think about uh, something in a specific way, uh, you, your mind is already framed. It's wired to think that way and you will not think differently. So all of those things, uh, all, all of the, those problems uh, that appear here in this, in this paragraph here, uh, all of this, we can improve our decision making if we increase the diversity of uh, ideas or the diversity of inputs uh, to the process, the diversity of viewpoints, uh, and that we can obtain by what the authors call here outreach. Right? Go and look for different ideas. Don't just go and talk to people that you know that think the same way you do, uh, because that will only reaffirm what you already know. In fact, one of the great dangers here of uh, our decision-making decision process, even when we do it collectively, is when we, we get into group thinking. That I've already explained to you that group thinking is not, it, it's an expression that does not mean thinking uh, in, in, in a group, in, in a way that everyone exposes their ideas and, 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 and you as a group get a better decision. Group thinking is when you have that feeling that you had a col collective decision but in fact, you are, you're only uh, like a herd uh, and you're all led to think exactly the same way. There's a lot of uh, things that I have highlighted here, but I will not be discussing in details. I just want to go straight to... Mm. 
yeah, where they say uh, even the current lack of theory a survey of the different sorry a survey of the different applications leads me to two general observations. First, collective intelligence tends to be the most effective in correcting individual biases in the overall task area of generation. Right? So to generate more ideas, to generate better ideas, collective intelligence. And then he says, I speculate that uh, we as individuals are far weaker explorers than evaluators. This means we're not as good as generating alternatives, but we are reasonably good at assessing among those that we have which one is, is the best. Right? So uh, for all the flaws in our heuristics, we are pretty good at detecting patterns. Thus, when tapping a collective, com uh, a collective, companies are now more likely to obtain greater value from idea generation than from idea uh, evaluation. Uh, and this is uh, uh, why many companies go out for open innovation and, and in open innovation projects what they want is to get different ideas that they can later decide if they, they're going to use or not. Uh, and then they, they give in this, uh, this uh, table here to the side, this, this figure here to the side, they give, a, they give a, a, a few examples of how some companies are using uh, what they call here decision 2.0, right? Uh, so Innocentive, Innocentive is a, 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 a company uh, that, um, uh, that basically supports open innovation, it helps other companies uh, define problems that they have and then have those problems explored by by the crowds of the internet. So and, and used for for research and uh, research and development and for innovation. So uh, then you have here a, uh, they use the, the example of Mechanical Turk. Mechanical Turk is that uh, it's a tool that is provided by Amazon uh, for little tasks, little paid tasks that people can can ask others to do for them. Uh, and they, they, they claim here that this could be a, a good for, for marketing research because you can hire these people even to, to answer your surveys. Uh, and then forecasting, customer service, knowledge management, so a few of the, the ways in which you can uh, use uh, system testing, crisis response. These are some of the examples they, they treat here in the, in the text. Uh, they make a distinction between uh, the advantages of the diversity of users or the ability of experts to decide on their own. Uh, and again here, they, for, for the author, it's probably better to have the crowds to generate alternatives and then maybe the, the experts to decide among them. Uh, I think these are the, 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 the main ideas here. And, and finally, well, it's, it's already 10 in the morning. Uh, we went, of course, as we have four papers here, there's a lot that I want to hear from you. And considering that you're sort of quiet when I ask you, at least uh, I hope that, uh, I'm glad that you write a lot in our, in our forums. So I want to have plenty of time for the forums. But very quickly, the last paper, the one uh, by Ripo and Ripu et Ali. Uh, this is a, a, a paper that deals a lot with the idea of the prosumers uh, and the possibility of having these professional amateurs, uh, which are also prosumers, which are also producers and consumers at the same time, to, to help uh, a company uh, develop its, its its products and, and services. Um, they have several examples here of uh, how companies are using um, so these prosumers to improve their value proposition. I think there is a table, where is it? 
this table here uh, gives some of those examples. So consumers can use uh, to help with uh, price comparison, product reviews, content reviews, preference reviews, seller review, reviewing, reviewing reviews, right? Review the reviews of others. Amazon uh, uh, does that and it's interesting. First you ask someone to, to, be a, to become a, a reviewer of, your, of products that you sell and then you ask other customers to say, Is, was that review good for you? Was it worth? Um, we also see Microsoft does that, that with, um, Microsoft involves customers sometimes in helping supporting other customers. Uh, we saw that in Nambisa and Nambisa 2008, one of the papers that remember when I had a class and I said, this is my entire information systems in organizations course in one class. There was a paper there by Nambisa and Nambisa where they report the way that Microsoft involved customers in, uh, in helping other customers providing support. Uh, so that's already collective, using collective intelligence, the, uh, using the collective brain muscles of uh, people to do something that otherwise Microsoft would, would have to be paying employees to do. But they not only do that, they also have the customer, the customers then evaluating or assessing the quality of the, the support that they receive. So it's very interesting how many companies are not only using uh, users or customers in assessment, but then other users and customers in the assessment of the assessment. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, this, uh, this last pap uh, paper is probably the, let's say, the most interesting one of, most interesting for our, let's say, for our, for our intents here, uh, uh, because uh, most of what uh, Ripu and Ali include there have already appeared somehow how in the other papers that you read before. So I think we have enough uh, of uh, papers as food for thought, right? As uh, idea generators for our discussion uh, on Moodle right after, uh, in, our, in our Moodle forum right after the, the break. Mm -hmm.